Well, good morning to everyone today, and thank you for joining us for our Masters of Science in Nutrition webinar for Masters of Science in Nutrition programs that we have available here at Bastyr University. My name is Emily James. I'm an admissions advisor here at Bastyr University, and I am joined here today by Deborah Bhutan, who is the chair of our Nutrition and Exercise Science Department. So just to let you know what we'll be going over for the next hour, we'll go over the details of our four different nutrition programs that we have to offer here at Bastyr and what you can expect to learn in each of those programs and also how to decide the, which program is correct for you and your passions. Towards the end part of the presentation, we will go over some of the admissions details and some important dates and deadlines for the, for the program as well. If you do have any questions throughout today's presentation, please feel free to enter them in the box um, that you see at this side of your screen. Those questions will be sent to us directly during the end of the presentation and will be do our best to address as many questions as we can. If we're not able to get to your questions today, we will follow up with you directly to make sure those questions are answered. Also, at the end of today's presentation, you will receive an emailed copy of the recorded webinar and the PowerPoint that we used today. So without further ado, I would love to turn this over to Deborah Boutin to dive into our nutrition programs. Deborah. Thank you, Emily. So I am very pleased to be with you today as chair of the Department of Nutrition and Exercise Science. This is an especially exciting day to have a webinar because we just had our graduation ceremony yesterday. And so we are still all flying high from the successes of our students and are ready to bring in another class. So it's a really great time to talk about what we do here. I also like to share um, Dr. Neil Malik's name and picture. He is our department chair down at our Bastyr University, California campus. Uh, as you can see, he's a little bit of an overachiever in that he has a lot of letters after his name and he has lots of specialty areas. And we are incredibly, incredibly proud to have him down there uh, working with us as well. So a little bit about me. I was uh, in WIC as my first nutrition career, as my first nutrition job. I've also worked in long-term care. I've worked for detention facilities. I've spent some time in recovery facilities, working in school districts. I've been a regional manager for healthcare and business accounts and food service management. Um, and I've also consulted for a number of retirement uh, organizations and senior services, including Meals on Wheels. And the reason I share that with you is that the nutrition field has a wide range of opportunities, lots and lots and lots of places that you can work. Um, and that is one of the greatest privileges and benefits of getting a degree in nutrition. Uh, everyone eats, that's not an original statement. And so there is a lot of information, a lot of populations, a lot of variety in where you can spend a nutrition career. Before I was interested in nutrition, well, I've always been interested in nutrition, but before I actually began my nutrition career, I was actually a bookkeeper. Uh, many, many years ago, I was in accounting. That's what I kind of prepared for as a career in accounting. And it wasn't until I was about 25, still fairly young, but decided that this is absolutely not for me. I really, really need to get into nutrition. That's my love, that's my interest. And that's when I actually began college at the age of 25, when I knew a little bit more what I wanted to do. And I share that with you because our master's programs, our classrooms are filled with students who have prior life experience. We have every possible background of student in with our classes, sharing their unique perspectives, sharing their backgrounds and their career uh, ideals about food and how they perceive food and nutrition. So truly it does make for a very dynamic learning experience as well as for us faculty, it makes for an excellent classroom, uh, just, just an incredibly cla passionate classroom space. Uh, another thing about me is that I love every aspect of nature possible. Bastyr is the best fit for me. As you think about whether or not Bastyr is a good fit for you, um, I just wanna share that I love nature in every single part of its, uh, fullness. Um, I love to cook. I love food. I love going to markets. 
Uh, I love feeding my hummingbirds at my home. I spent Sunday morning watching a mama deer and two tiny little baby deer eating every single flower in my flower garden. So I am truly a, a nature girl from beginning to end. And many of the students who come to Bastyr very much share that passion for nature as well. So with that, our mission is to educate future leaders in the natural health arts and sciences. Natural health means what is nature telling us and how can those messages influence health. The Bastyr mission is to respect the healing power of nature and to acknowledge that mind, body, and spirit are all working on this together as we model an integrated approach to education, research, and clinical service. We lead that mission strongly and proudly. Within our department, we want each of the students who comes to spend time with us to understand that both food and movement are essential to health, but also that every food choice may have an impact on not only the individual choosing that food, but their health then is a ripple effect out to their families, their community, and every food choice also impacts the planet. And so we want our students to be apprised of that full spectrum of how food choice and nutrition influences a much greater circle than just themselves. Whole food is what we do, and we are incredibly proud of that. Every single student who comes into any of our programs, at a minimum, takes a course called Whole Food Production, where we get in the kitchen and we make sure that you know exactly what to do with a fruit and a vegetable and a grain and a legume and a green, and also well-nourished uh, and uh, humanely treated animal proteins and products. Uh, kitchen time is very important time. We value not only the the preparation of the food, but also the dining together, the, the ability to nourish ourselves with others. So whole food production and our, our kitchen space is a very important part of all of our programs. Here on the Bastyr Kenmore campus, we also have a beautiful garden, uh, which is also a privilege for our students who can take courses in organic gardening and other ways to learn more about food at the very, very initial stages. When we talk about whole food nutrition, I always like to make sure that we're all speaking the same language. I give credit to Cynthia Lair, who is a longtime 20 plus uh, faculty member here with us and still teaches as an adjunct. Um, and Cynthia Lair coined this very simple term of whole food nutrition, which has become our brand many years ago. And with that, what we mean is when you're looking at a food, if you can ask these five questions, uh, it may help you to determine if a food is whole. A whole food is that which is the least processed, which is in its most natural form, like the apples you're seeing on this screen. And if you can imagine a food growing, it's probably very much likely to be a whole food. If it has only one or very few ingredients, such as itself, as would be the apple, then it is probably most likely a whole food. If you're able to eat the whole food or almost all of it, versus also thinking about what has been done to it since it was harvested, the least that was done to it, the better. Um, and also, how long has the food been known to nourish humans? So again, if, if the food has been around, such as an apple, for hundreds and hundreds, potentially thousands of years, it most likely is a whole food. We know that the whole food industry, food production industry, food products industry has only been around for less than a couple hundred years. So anything that's been designed in this short time frame is much less likely to be a whole food. So with that, we, we talk about the Bastyr bubble and our perception of food, which looks something like this. But we're also very aware that the world does not see food in the same way and that we have to be realistic and that to the world, food means a lot of different types of products, a lot of different styles of food that people consider for their own nourishment. And so we must support our students in meeting each of their clients or each of their family members and even themselves at the place that they are on this whole food spectrum. If someone is only used to eating apple fruit roll-ups as their only fruit source, then that's what they're used to. And the best thing we can do for them is to maybe take them a little step on the spectrum towards eating an apple fruit granola bar that maybe has a few more natural ingredients. Slowly and surely making people, uh, supporting people and making very positive small changes is the best way to guide them towards the whole foods end of the, the spectrum. Um, no, we don't want any of our students to be police. We don't want any of them to be 
uh, reprimanding or punitive with regard to food. It's all about meeting people where they are, guiding them slowly through their own senses, through their own taste buds towards a more whole foods diet. On the same scheme is activity and movement. There can also be extremes of one end or the other on how we use movement to support our health. We know that physiologically, psychologically, spiritually, movement is very important to us, um, but we're also incorporating this content into our curriculum on how it supports wellness and promoting health so that our students have an understanding of that. So in the world of nutrition, it can be a really sensitive area. We know that there are tons of places that you can Google and get all the nutrition information you could possibly want. Unfortunately, that's part of the problem in that so many people are incredibly confused. Oftentimes, we'll have folks who have, think, have a belief that food belief is enough, that if they have a food belief and if they have personal experience with either, either a family member's health or their own personal health, or they simply like to help people, that that's all they need to be a nutritionist. And that term can be used, unfortunately, uh, with less accuracy than it should be. We don't believe that this is enough. We believe this is a good start to becoming a good and effective and accurate nutrition professional, but we think there are a lot of other things. Nutrition is a science. Metabolism is a science. Food science is a science. And the science is always changing. I would say at least 50% of what I learned in my graduate program is now null and void, not because my teachers didn't know what they were talking about back then, but rather that now we have more information. We know more about food and nutrition that makes this all even more fascinating. And so we teach our students at the master's level, not just about food and nutrition, but we teach them how to learn about food and nutrition and to be passionate about that because they will need to continue learning about it for the rest of their lives. Again, it's important that <clears throat> all applicants realize this is a science program. There is nothing non-science based about nutrition. And so the key here is to give the information, the, the biochemical science, the background necessary so that our students can be the ones who can draw that line between information and misinformation, which we know the world is so filled with. Unique to our clinical graduate degree programs, which would be two of our four clinical programs, we do have our own teaching clinic here in Kenmore. It's located in downtown Seattle, and all of our students get to see real live patients in an outpatient setting and practice beside naturopathic doctoral students, acupuncture students, counseling students, when our students exit our program in their exit surveys, this is always their top, top, uh, number one joy of the program. The thing they appreciated the most is that they get this direct clinical experience. So this is a really unique aspect of our programs of which we're very proud. So here are the four programs that we offer. What I'm going to do is share a little bit about each of them tell you a little bit about what some of our students are doing with their careers in these programs, um, and then we'll pass it on to Emily to make sure that she can tell you how to apply. I'll also state here that I am very open to having a conversation or an email stream with anyone on the line right now, with anyone who is interested in these programs. We want to make sure that the program you choose is the right fit for your career choice. And we're happy to have that dialogue with you to make sure that you are in the program that will best match your passions and that will best match what you want to do and in your nutrition career. So the four programs of the Master of Science in Nutrition program, a Master of Science in Nutrition combined with the Master of Arts and Counseling Psychology program, our Dietetics program, which is the DPD or Didactic Program in Dietetics com combination, and then lastly but definitely not least is our Master of Science in Nutrition for Wellness which is offered only at our California San Diego campus. So our Master of Science in Nutrition is a generic but uniquely whole foods, again, approach to nutrition. Um, it is very similar to Master of Science in Nutrition programs you might see at other universities in that it ends in a thesis. The capstone project in this particular program is that our students are doing their own research project and they are then presenting the results of their research in a campus-wide presentation. 
Hopefully, they'll also be submitting their work in uh, towards some type of published uh, uh, scientific journal so that they can share what they've learned. So this really is a degree program that's designed for individuals who really want to take that scientific approach to metabolism and food science to the ultimate level. The best way to understand how to read and how to understand research for the rest of your life is to actually do a research project yourself. And so that's really the emphasis here. It is a two-year program, and Dr. Alexandra Kazax is our faculty advisor, and she makes very well sure that everyone's done with their project on time. Uh, so the first year of the program, you are in courses with many of the other students. So we have a very common core of our Master of Science in Nutrition program coursework, disease processes, nutrition assessment therapy, macronutrients, micronutrients, introduction to research methods and biostats. These courses you're taking with the other cohorts, learning about what they're doing as well, and getting your foundational work in nutrition science. You're also taking an additional course just for those in this program called Applied Research Skills. And in this series of uh, questions in this course, you're actually designing your research question. So by the end of your first year, you will have a proposal set for your research project. In year two, you're working really hard on carrying out your research project and you're writing your thesis together with the support of a faculty committee who is there beside you. You're also learning about your peers project. So every week these students meet together to find out what the other, uh, their colleagues are doing, where they are, what support and help they need. Uh, again, Dr. Kazax is with you through the whole process. They're also learning more coursework in food science, applied statistical analysis, so they know how to best analyze the research data that they're bringing in. And then we have a contemporary nutrition series, which starts with environmental nutrition, it then moves into public health and legislative work. And lastly, in the final quarter, the interns or the students, I'm sorry, are actually designing a grant proposal to resolve a nutrition problem that they've identified in the world. So a really unique series that gives students another specific and very appropriate set of skills for their careers. These are some of the examples of projects that students have done in the past, a wide, wide range. Um, in addition to these, some of the students this year, uh, one student did a very fine survey of diversity among dietetics professionals. Another interviewed and did dietary analysis of international Asian students in the Seattle area to find out how time in the United States changed their diet and their weight. Um, and another student actually did a a very interesting study on mealworms and how the consumption of mealworms might be um, seen as positive or negative by nutrition professionals. So some really unique work. We're always very, very proud of what our students come up with for their thesis projects. So this is a great program if your ultimate goal is to pursue a doctoral degree in either uh, nutrition or some other type of health science. Also, if you want to work in academia, this would be a great opportunity. If you do want to do research and that is your career goal, this would be a great degree for you. Or if you already are a registered dietitian and you're looking for a master's degree to round out your career, this would also be an excellent choice. Individuals who have graduated from this program uh, are doing a variety of things uh, from working in public health to working in policy some have gone to continue work into research labs here in the greater uh, Northwest, Pacific Northwest. Um, and so these are some of the areas that individuals are working in. Our next degree is a Master of Science in Nutrition and Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology. For those of you who've been watching Best Year for quite some time, you may note a little twist here. This was previously known as the Master of Science in Nutrition and Clinical Health Psychology program. We've made a change to this program based upon changes required to become licensed mental health counselors across the country. So the criteria over time has changed since our original program was designed, and we wanted to make sure that our students and graduates were prepared to go out and become a licensed mental health counselor in any of the states in the country. So the requirements were actually increased on the counseling side. So this program was built up to make sure that students had what they needed. 
This program offers, individu offers individuals two degrees, so you are now getting both a degree in nutrition and a degree in counseling psychology. The emphasis here is the mind-body connection, and for students who come into this program, they just know. Uh, they believe that there is no other way that they could study nutrition and food rather than to think about the mind and how the mind influenced food choice, to think about the relationship that people have with food, um, and so this is definitely a calling kind of program where individuals who come into it are super excited. They know exactly what they want. If, again, your goal is to develop effective counseling skills versus nutrition education skills, this is the program. So this is a three-year program, as was the old MSN CHP program. Because we did have to add more counseling credits, we added two summers worth of content, but we did maintain it within a three-year program. So for those of you thinking about beginning this program in 2019, just be aware that the program would begin with summer quarter. So again, many of the nutrition courses during the first year, you're working with the other students who uh, are in these other programs. Very similar content, disease processes, nutrition assessment therapy, macro and micronutrient research methods. But in addition, you're getting your foundation courses in counseling. So fundamentals of counseling, mind-body approaches, bringing in that centering, connecting point um, in your counseling foundation. Throughout the program, we have what we call bridge courses. So while the first year is very heavy in nutrition, we have these short bridge courses that are bringing in more of the counseling content. And then in year two and three, when you have more counseling courses, we have the bridge courses bringing back the nutrition content. So that while you're earning two degrees in one program, you're also reminded of the swing between these two areas and the impact that it has on food choice. So you'll see that in year two, much greater depth in the counseling courses. You're learning about biopsychosocial approaches, counseling for groups, counseling for trauma, counseling for a, a variety of, of different uh, life cycles, psychopathology, also thinking about actually practicing. Again, this is a clinical program, so students get to be at Bastyr Center for Natural Health and they get to actually be practicing nutrition counseling as well as, uh, life, as mental health counseling. Year three is where the, the counseling courses become even more deep. Uh, so learning about things like addictions, family and couples counseling, career counseling, counseling for individuals with terminal illness. In addition to this coursework, students are in a practicum off campus, usually 16 to 20 hours a week, they're at an actual mental health facility or some type of clinic practicing their counseling skills out in the world. Um, and this is where students really bring together all of their, uh, all of the content that they've learned so far and really begin to practice their own unique counseling style. So this is a very unique program. Again, we're very proud of it. If you want to be a licensed mental health counselor, this is the program for you a mental health counselor who also has a very firm foundation and knowledge about nutrition. There is a big difference between counseling and educating, and for people who are sometimes confused between this program or the DPD program, I like to say that the difference is when you're a dietitian, you're teaching people in an education format about food and nutrition, and you can use some counseling skills in order to do that, but the difference in being a licensed mental health counselor is that if a client came to you and they wanted to change their diet, but you as a counselor could diagnose that they were depressed or maybe they were in grief or they had anxiety. And as a counselor, you could then use counseling to treat the anxiety or the grief or the depression and manage that. And then that person may be very well, much more prepared to make dietary or lifestyle change. So it's a very different paradigm of treatment. If you are a person who has a real passion for that mind-body connection, or if you're already a registered dietitian, we've had several registered dietitians who did their DPD at the undergraduate level, come back and do this program um, and have this extra skill and this extra set of uh, credentials. We have several people in the field right now in private practice using uh, this, this uh, degree. We also have many people working in eating disorders, working with terminal clients, 
uh, and lots of different food sensitivity, food allergy, gastrointestinal uh, practices. I will say, and we, we work with the students again, that the nutrition degree in and of itself is not enough to allow everyone to practice nutrition in every state. Every state has very different criteria for what's required to practice nutrition. So while the licensed mental health counselor is very uh, well suited here for work across the country, we would wanna work with you and make sure that you were prepared to do a nutrition work if that was your choice. In the state of Washington, you can uh, use this uh, degree to become a certified nutritionist in the state of Washington. But again, I wanna make sure that it's clear that every state has a little different requirement. The next program is a Master of Science in Nutrition with Didactic Program in Dietetics. This is our largest program uh, typically. Um, and the goal here is that you do want to become a credentialed registered dietitian nutritionist. This is a credential that is good in all 50 states across the country. Um, I myself am a registered dietitian and it has allowed me to have a very wide and, and very um, fabulous career. So it is the first of three steps. First, you must do a DPD program such as this one. You must then do a dietetic internship, and I'm required by our accreditors to say that it is a very competitive process to get a dietetic internship. The national match rate for internships is 50%, meaning that if 4,000 people apply, roughly 2,000 would get an internship. But I'm also very proud to say that our MSN DPD program students, our match rate is closer to 85% on a national average. And when we, if a student doesn't get placed in year one, then we just help them until they do find an internship. So it is not an end if you don't get matched the first time around. We continue to support you until you can fulfill your goals. The third step towards becoming a registered dietitian is to take a national exam, and that comes after the internship is completed. So this also is a two-year program. Um, it is, again, somewhat typical with dietetic programs across the country. We must meet the same criteria and the same accreditation content. However, we go above and beyond in also offering a natural health perspective and whole foods perspective, and that's what makes our program so unique. So you'll see similar courses here. There's, in addition, nutrition counseling, which is the course that helps our students become prepared to do the clinic practicum, which I talked about earlier, where they get real life experience at our teaching clinic. We also have an entire course dedicated in the second year to helping our students prepare their internship application, which helps them to be more successful. There's a food service management series and a medical nutrition therapy course, which focuses on hospital-based acute care nutrition, which is also a part of the accreditation requirements. These students also take the contemporary nutrition series, uh, ending with developing a grant proposal. And then they do get their time at Baxter Center for Natural Health. In addition, um, the Sorry about that. In addition, the students are also required to do um, volunteer or paid nutrition experience. So what this helps them to do is to be prepared for uh, their internship, to have experience that they can put on an application, and it does support them in being more competitive. We do have a nutrition volunteer coordinator, a position who helps people, our students find these potential uh, opportunities. There's also an exit exam in this program, which helps students to prepare for that final registration exam. So if you want a career where you can do uh, practically anything in nutrition across any state in the country, this would be the credential that you would want to seek. If you're interested in working in healthcare, whether in outpatient or inpatient, chronic or acute illnesses, this would allow you to do that. It's also a nutrition credential that is uh, supportive for gaining uh, administrative experience, either in public health or in clinical fields. Our interns and students who are out in the field with having had this degree um, are doing fabulous work. I am so proud that here in the Seattle area, all the major medical centers have Bastyr alumni working in them. Um, they are working in uh, outpatient, they are working in renal dialysis, they are working in eating disorders. Uh, we have students with this uh, degree working in uh, public health just across the entire spectrum. Um, some are working in private practice and in integrative practice with naturopaths or massage therapists or counselors, 
friends they've met at Bastyr that they've put together their own clinic. Uh, so lots of really exceptional work being done across the country in, with our graduates from this degree. Our fourth program is our Master of Science in Nutrition for Wellness. Again, this is offered only at our California campus. We're incredibly proud of this program. It's really new. We just had our second group of students graduate this weekend, a fabulous group of students. The goal of this program is to really help with an understanding of how to create education streams for groups of people. So it's a very different platform. It's not meant to train people how to do one-to-one -one nutrition. It's not meant to be a clinical program. It's really focused more on how we consume nutrition science and then turn that into a translatable, understandable, wide medium uh, for people to understand. It also features Whole Foods as the foundation, but it's a little different twist on the curriculum. So there are some common courses here. We do have macro micronutrients. We do have disease processes, but you'll see there's fundamentals of motivation and behavior change here. So what drives people to make lifestyle change and how can we motivate them through the written word, through classes, through any type of different education uh, series. There's a course in writing so that our students are prepared to do effective blog writing and article for the lay public and newsletters. There's more also more um, culinary courses in this program. So a series of therapeutic cooking. How would you help do uh, cooking classes or series for someone who may have diabetes or someone who may have cardiovascular disease? How would you teach them to cook for themselves in a way that supported their health? Also a course on cooking demonstration. Not everyone can just stand up there and create a recipe and teach well. There is a skill to that and we teach our students how to do that. These students also have the contemporary nutrition series so they can also prepare a grant proposal and work effectively in a public health setting. But their key capstone is a course and a series on how to develop and evaluate an actual nutrition education program. And the students actually do that. They create an education program for a community uh, space. They deliver that program and then they evaluate it. Um, and it really is a, their capstone is, is very powerful in how they've reached people uh, through a wide range of different nutrition education uh, forums. They also learn about leadership in business so that if they did want to use their entrepreneurial skills, they would have those to help launch their own nutrition business using these unique skill sets. So again, because we only have a couple of graduates um, graduating classes so far, we don't have a lot to tell you about career, what people are doing, but this is what we've designed the program for. These are areas that we know exist in the job market that they need nutrition professionals for. So in any area of employee or corporate wellness program design, grocery stores hire individuals to market products, to, to do cooking demos in their stores, to create uh, materials for their customers, food writing, preventive health degree programs, uh, grant project support, food spokesperson, Places like the Almond Board, the Avocado Board, they hire individuals to sell their product and to market their Whole Foods products. So our, these graduates would be very well versed to, to be able to do that. And then also just to key in on any of the entrepreneurial ideas that our students may have. So those are our four master's programs. Again, we are terribly proud of all of them, of each of our students who passes through those programs. Uh, they all focus on food and it is very, uh, may sound very odd to you that not all nutrition programs out in the world actually focus on food. Many of them simply focus on nutrients, which are of course critically important to understanding, but we really believe that to be most effective in the field, you need to be able to talk food. That's what people understand and our students are prepared to do that. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Emily for finding out how to apply. Thank you so much, Deborah, for that incredibly inspiring and very informational presentation. Um, just before I dive into the admissions information, just a friendly reminder, we are taking questions throughout this entire presentation. So if any questions have come up during what Deborah has just spoke about or during my admission section, please feel free to send those over and we'll get to those as soon as possible. 
All right, so for the admissions requirements for the Masters of Science and Nutrition programs as a whole, they're kind of a little bit intermixed. Um, we do our best to let you know which programs are required, if not all of them, by just the acronyms at the end of the prerequisites. Um, so there's quite a few prerequisites for these programs, but we also want to make sure that every individual coming into these programs have the structure for success. Um, so first of all, a, a bachelor's degree from any regionally accredited institution or an equivalent. So if you are an international student and you have received a bachelor's degree from overseas, anything of outside this country, please go ahead and get that evaluated to see if it does meet our requirements as well. There are a handful of prerequisites that do not have an expiration date and that we will accept a C or a 2.0 or higher. And those are our general chemistries, college algebra math courses, and also that general psychology course. Keep in mind, we will only accept a 2.0 for the dietetics course and the MSNW course. The courses that do have an expiration date of seven years, we would ask that you um, strive for a B or a 3.0 or higher in the organic chemistry, biochemistry, physiology, also microbiology, intro to nutrition, and then that general psychology course specifically for that new program that we are doing the dual track with Masters of Science and Nutrition and Masters of Arts of Counseling Psychology. Here are some prerequisite tips. Please, please apply and feel free to apply while these prerequisites are still in progress. If you have some outstanding prerequisites, there will, there will be a section on your application to include information on when and where you are planning to complete your outstanding prerequisites. It is very common um, for individuals to be admitted with up to three outstanding prerequisites. I just need to know a plan of where and when you plan to complete these and see that it, they are meeting our requirements for those outstanding prerequisites. Like I said before, we have these prerequisites to structure a, a, a building block for your success in these programs. So you do not have to have a science background. It's no problem. However, please keep in mind that these science prerequisites, especially the chemistry series, can take up to two years to complete. So please plan ahead. Our course equivalency guide can be found at bastier.edu slash guides, G-U-I-D-E-S. And this is a great resource. We only have a few states that are listed there, but we have done our research in order for you to have course codes and schools that offer the courses that we will require for these prerequisites. Additionally, we do have distance learning options available that are all of the online courses that we will also accept for these programs. Now, if you are one of those wonderful individuals that do need many, if not all of these prerequisites, we do have what's called a post-baccalaureate program. And this is a one-year non-degree seeking program that we have formulated in order to make these prerequisites doable within one year. Um, like I said before, they can take up to two or even three years to complete. So here's the layout for what a full-time post-baccalaureate student would see in their program. This is an as-needed program. So if you do not need all of these courses, you do not have to retake them with Bastier. It's a great opportunity if you've taken them a long time ago, they've expired, you took them and you, and you got a C, or you haven't taken any of these and you're excited to, to venture into this nutrition world. Um, so this slide has a lot of dates on it. 
Um, once again, you will be receiving this as a recording afterward. Um, so just to keep track of these dates for the admissions timeline, for our new MSN MACP program, we do have a priority deadline of January 2nd for all applications. February 1st is the application deadline for our MSN, MSN DPD, and MSNW programs, and all of our applications are online. Keep in mind that we do have rolling admissions, so we will and have many, many times accepted applications and applicants after this deadline. So if you are, you know, at family emergency or out of town vacationing or just not able to complete the application online, that's fine. Um, you can absolutely still apply. By March 15th, we are then accepting all the applications for the post-baccalaureate program that I mentioned for all of the prerequisites. And then there's some just some helpful hints or date ranges for you guys. Um, April 15th is the application deadline for financial aid. Once again, this is not a hard deadline, but they do urge everyone to get it in by April 15th. If you are a late applicant, you can still apply for financial aid. It just may be a little bit delayed um, as they're getting everyone else also caught up in getting them applied for financial aid as well. Anywhere between July and August are summer courses. These are summer courses do start the program for the MSN MACP program as it is a summer course format. And then there's also some outstanding prerequisites available for the MSN, MSN DPD, and MSNW courses. Late in September, about the third week, we do welcome all of the new students on campus for our orientation. And then the last week of September is when classes do begin. Last but not least, I just wanted to give you some faces with the names of individuals that will be helping you out throughout your discovery of, of what programs you'd like to get into and any questions that you may have. On the left here, we have myself, Emily James. I am the admissions advisor in Washington or Kenmore at our Kenmore campus for MSN, MSN DPD, and MSN MACP programs. And then we have Terrence on the right. He is our California representative and will be communicating with anyone interested in the MSNW programs. Additionally, here's some other links or websites or emails if you do, if you are interested in reaching out. The number, the phone number in the middle of the slide is how to schedule an advising appointment or get in contact with any of the advisors here on campus. Additionally, student outreach at bestier.edu. I do have some students that work for the admissions department and are able to answer some questions if you do have any that are um, targeted more towards in uh, students that are currently in these programs. All right, so just before I dive into questions, real quick, I uh, wanna make sure all of you know we are hosting another webinar for our dietetic internship. So any of you who might be interested or are absolutely interested in that MSN DPD program, you might want to register for this. Um, it'll be packed full of information on the dietetic internship. And that is this Thursday at 1230 Pacific time, June 28th. You may have also received an email from me for a, the, a link to register for this webinar. If, you're, if you haven't, please feel free to reach out to me and I can send you that information. Additionally, our Kenmore campus will be hosting an on-campus event called Discover Bastier on Saturday, August 11th. And you can register for that event by visiting bastier.edu slash discoverbastier. If you're not, if you are able to make it, please stop by and say hi. We absolutely love putting faces to the name. And not to mention, if you do attend any on-campus event, we will waive your application fee if and when you do choose to, to apply. All right. Oh, good. We have a lot of questions that came in. So let's jump into those. So the first question we have is from Emily and she is asking, is 
they're a resource website for color for scholarships and internships so for scholarships our financial aid website um, does have a lot of information if you go to our website and go to the admissions tab and then financial aid go all the way to the bottom and they have a lot of um, scholarship engines that they have researched and made sure that you have access to them. Additionally, by applying by the priority deadline that I discussed earlier in the, in the webinar, you are automatically applying for our auto honors at entrance scholarship um, that is handed out by the admissions department. Deborah, would you like to touch on any resources for internships? Uh, we do for the people who are admitted into our internship. If there are um, application or if there are scholarships available that come in from pro pro professional organizations or other sites, I do pass those on directly to the interns. Typically, those in those uh, scholarships are uh, people you have to be an actual intern in order to be eligible. So I make sure that those in the program get access to all the possible uh, scholarships available to them once they are admitted. Perfect. And Deborah, this next question is asking if there's any cooking courses in the DPD program. Yes, there's actually two. So the whole food production course is a cooking course that all of our students take in all of the programs. It basically is a lecture and a lab and the lecture part teaches you from seed to table how the food is grown, how it's processed, how it's transported, um, and then how it is served to the table. And then the lab portion is in our teaching kitchen where you actually get to practice preparing the food with proven recipes. And then you sit down and dine on a meal together with your peers. So whole food production is a course that everyone takes. The DPD students also have a course called therapeutic cooking, which is a course designed to help students practice specific diets for specific disease states. So whether that's a diabetes management diet or a gluten-free diet or a cardiovascular diet, uh, the DPD students do take that course as well. And then many of the DPD students want to take other courses offered in the kitchen as electives. And if that fits into their schedule, they're able to do that. So for example, the course on cooking demonstration, or we have another therapeutic cooking. We have a chef's pantry course that teaches about food preservation. Uh, so if those courses fit in your schedule and if you're interested, you can take those courses as well as an electives. Perfect. And this next question, does the San Diego campus have all four nutrition programs or only the MSNW? That is only the MSNW campus, or I'm sorry, program uh, that is at the California campus. If you are interested in any of the other three, we do host those only at Kenmore. All right, the next question, is it possible to complete any or all of the Masters of Arts of Counseling Psychology program online. This program is not offered as an online program at this time. However, there is a hybrid mix to it. So you're only on campus for three days in the evening or afternoon evening, anywhere between 3 and 9 p.m for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, and some of those courses may have an online component. However, it is not completely online. They do share the online learning with the in-class learning. And I'll just add to that, that as a part of the MSN MACP program, um, all of those courses are weekdays. Uh, they are all in-person live classes. Um, and the nutrition courses may be on other days other than those times that Emily just mentioned. Perfect. Thank you, Deborah. This next question, is the MACP program offered at both campuses? The answer is yes. They are offered during different times. So the, the Kenmore campus is offered during as a summer start program and the California campus as a fall start program subject to change. However, the combination of the dual track programs, the MSN MACP program is only offered in Washington at this time. When do you have to have all prereqs completed by? Can you complete them while still in the master's program? 
Unfortunately, no. They must be completed before the start of the programs that you are applying to and attending. So if that is the MSN MACP program, that would be before the summer start. And if they are the other two pro or other three programs, MSN, MSN DPD, or MSNW, they must be completed before the fall. What kind of attributes are you looking for an exceptional MSN DPD application? That is a great question. Um, so for an MSN DPD application on the admission standpoint, then I'll I'll dive over to Debra. Our GPA standards, course evaluations, also personal statements, and we also do require two letters of recommendation, one professional and one academic. Deborah, do you have any pointers or um, keywords that we're looking for in applications as well? Um, I'll, yes, I'll just add that, you know, we do, we want our students to be successful. And so we are the first step towards becoming a registered dietitian. Um, and we know the competitive nature of the dietetic internships. And so for students who do not show strong academic uh, uh, potential, uh, we have denied applications based upon that because it's so critical to have a, a stellar GPA to be able to get an internship. So that's generally the one thing that we're just in, in all honesty sharing with students. Um, however, if you have an undergraduate degree that you've done some years ago and it was a different time in your life and your prerequisites are much stronger and you're showing current academic potential as being very strong, then that's a whole different story and we definitely support you and will do everything in our power to make sure that your master's uh, degree then is very successful so that you have that to show when you apply for dietetic internships. So ultimately, we are looking for individuals with strong passion, with a commitment. Um, the DPD program is very rigorous because in addition to the regular coursework, you have the DPD coursework on top of that and the volunteer requirements on top of that. So it is very challenging. We've had students come in and choose to do it over three years instead of two. We've also had students who have planned accordingly and have literally gotten all of their volunteer or nutrition related experience done before they've even come to campus so they can just focus on their coursework. So there's lots of ways to go about it, but for students who are combining all of it at once, it is very rigorous. And so we just want to support you and make sure that you have the tools you need uh, as you apply. We're looking for any triggers that might indicate that you know it would be a, a a difficult program for you, but otherwise we're here to support you and make sure that you succeed. Perfect, thank you. So we only have time for just a couple more questions, um, but once again, we will address all questions if we have missed yours. Um, I will reach out to you individually or Deborah or, or Terrence as well. This next question, does the team offer any application fee waiver to attending online events? Unfortunately, no. Um, we do ask that you attend an on-campus event, um, register with us, and then also let us know that you have attended um, by checking in at any one of the stations that we have available. That way, when you do apply, our systems can talk to one another and get that application fee waived for you. Is the post-baccalaureate program offered in San Diego as well? No. Unfortunately, it's only offered in the Seattle campus. Um, Terrence is available though, if you are in San Diego or that area, um, to be able to meet those prerequisites as well as myself in order to discuss colleges in California or in any state really, um, to find those prerequisites that will be met. You do not have to attend this post-baccalaureate program in order to qualify for our master's program. It's just an incredible resource if you are able to make it, if you do live out of state. All right, is it possible to specialize through the DPD program to an audience such as pediatrics? That's a great question. That's a great question. So definitely um, our program provides the baseline information about how to become, uh, to be prepared for an internship. Internships are then the next step that would take a, a student into more of a specialty area. And there are internships that are pediatric specific. Uh, pediatrics is considered a specialty area in the field of dietetics. And so 
um, one could either go on to do an internship or if they did not get an internship uh, could join an entry-level pediatric position and then work in the field a while in order to become specialized but to answer your question yes if you wanted to work in pediatrics dietetics uh, the DPD program would be the best program for you to ensure that you have the skills needed to become uh, to be to work in nutrition and pediatrics. Perfect. All right. And last question for the day before we close out. Have students in the past been able to work part time while doing any of the MSN tracks? Does this curriculum allow time or is it a very intense schedule? Um, I, I think the answer to that, to both of those questions is yes. <laughs> Many of our students, I think the percentage is 90 plus percent of the students on our campus overall do work. Um, some of our students work in a work study, so they have the opportunity to work right here on campus, whether it's in our dining commons or the bookstore or as a teaching assistant and can work conveniently right here on campus in between classes. Um, other students have part-time jobs on the weekends and that works out just fine. Uh, so yes, the majority of our students work. Ideally for the DPD program, we encourage students if they can find work that also will support their volunteer nutrition hours, they don't have to be volunteer, we call them that, but they can be paid as well, um, then that is really effective. Uh, but we do, we try our best to schedule courses at a time that allows students some, some segue time into jobs or uh, other required experiences. That's not always possible every quarter, uh, but definitely weekends and evenings are generally free for most programs, um, except for the MACP portion of the MSN MACP. <laughs> but we do, we do know that students have these outside commitments and we support them um, in, in trying to achieve those. Perfect. All right. Well, that is all the time that we have for today. And there are a couple questions we were not able to get to, so I will contact you directly. But please keep in mind that you will be emailed a recording of this webinar, so you do have all of the resources available to you. We will also publish this on our website. If you do by chance delete it or misplace it or don't receive it, which hasn't happened in the past. Um, please remember to feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions after this webinar. Um, thank you again for attending. And once again, thank you, Deborah, for such an incredible, inspirational, informational presentation. It's a great help. All right. Well, thank you so much for attending, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.